All right guys, so today I'm going to build the world's best survival kit in a tin can, in an Altoids tin can. And yeah, I have to say that I've watched like 1000 videos of how people do it and today I thought that I want to give it a try myself. And actually I have to say that I really enjoy watching people putting so much love into their small survival kits. So yeah, today I thought that I want to give it a try myself and make a really good survival kit in a tin can. So stay tuned. Okay, as you can see, I've already, you know, uh, searched for small survival stuff that I had laying around. And today I want to see how much I can fit into the small tin can here. So the first thing that I want to have in my survival kit is the small knife here, which is, I think the OpenL number four or something. It's pretty small but it has a razor sharp blade and I really like the small knife. It does not come with the safety mechanism that the bigger knives have from Opinel. So you really have to be careful that you do not cut yourself. And this is why I only take the knife like this. And it also has a very sharp spine so you can easily strike a fire steel with it. So with this small knife you won't do a lot of wood processing but you can carve a lot of small feather sticks or you can cut a fish or a deer. So it's always great to have a nice cutting blade in your survival kit. So this is definitely going into my tin can. Next I want to have a way to make fire. So I'm going to throw a simple ferro rod into my tin can. And this will allow you to make fire in most conditions. One time I had a smaller ferro rod, but I can't find it anymore, so now I'm taking this one. Okay, um, next I want to have something to sharpen a knife. So this is a knife sharpener and it's um, coated with diamonds. It's not the best one, but actually it's really flat, so it won't take up a lot of room inside of the tin. And it's always great uh, that you have an opportunity to make your knife sharp again. So a knife sharpener is always a great idea for a survival kit. Okay, next. I want to throw in some kind of arrow tip because it's really hard to make an arrow tip from natural materials. And having a tip like this one here, for example, would be really great because this is really easy to mount to an arrow and this is actually a medieval arrow tip. It's pretty heavy and takes up a lot of room but actually I really want this to be in my survival kit. And if you are able to create a good arrow then you really increase your chances of surviving a little bit longer. Okay next I want to put in here this here. This is a ring which is closing itself and I really want to have this in my kit because with this you can you know make for example a frog spear so you just take a pole and put the ring around a pole a wooden pole a stick and then you can attach like nails or something else um, or even your knife you can even take your knife and attach it to a stick with this ring here and then you will have a very good connection to the wood which is important if you want to make a spear. There are so many variations that you can use this for so this is definitely going into my survival kit. Alright, so next I want to throw in one of these hooks here and these hooks are great because you can make a makeshift fishing rod with these. So you just screw them into a stick, into a fishing pole, and then you just fit through the fishing line and then you will have a better fishing rod. So these small hooked screws are really great. And I've built some survival fishing rods using these already and they worked really good. So I'm going to throw like two of these hooks into the survival kit. The next item that I want to throw into my survival kit is this here. 
It's a safety pin which can be used for first aid or for fixing stuff. Like for example, if you have ripped a hole into your clothes, you can close it and you can even make a makeshift fishing hook with this. So there are a lot of things that you can make with this and I definitely want to have this safety pin in my Altoid survival kit. And another thing that I want to have in my kit is this needle here. And needles are great because first of all you can do some sewing but also uh, for example if you have a splinter in your skin you can take the needle and get it out and this way you will prevent inflammation. Alright so these two things I want to tape to the lid so that I don't lose them if I open up the tin you know. So I'm taking my tape here and I attach the needle to the tin and the safety pin as well. Mm, I do it like this. Okay, so this should do. Alrighty, so that's the tin so far. Doesn't look so bad. And next I want to put in a snare wire. So this here is a small snare that I have built myself some time ago. It's basically some wire double wrapped and there's a small ring here and you just go through the ring like this and then you have a really nice snare. So it's always good to have some wire in your survival kit. You can use this for other stuff as well, like for making a torch or so. So a small piece of wire is always great to have. Another important tool is this here. It's a signal whistle, which is pretty loud. And I've chosen this one because it's really small in diameter. So if you are in an emergency situation and you really need help, but you can't scream anymore, then a small signal whistle is not only, you know, much louder than your voice, but also it's less exhausting than shouting, for example. I'm taking off the ring because then it's even smaller. And I put the ring back into the kit. Okay, next I have a couple of hooks and sinkers in the small bag. So fishing is always a good thing to try in the wilderness if you get hungry. And I'm going to throw some fish hooks and sinkers into my survival kit. And these small hooked screws I'm going to throw together with the fish hooks as well. And I'm going to put this bag into the plastic bag because otherwise you might lose some of these small parts and this way it's really safe. So there's always a risk that you will lose your stuff when opening up the tin can. So be careful and do not use small parts uh, which are flying around inside of the tin can. Okay, so now as we have our hooks in here, we also need a little bit of fishing line. And yeah, the thing with fishing line is that it tangles up pretty easily. So now I want to find something where I can wrap around the fishing wire. I'm going to take this here. This here is a small wax candle. And the candle is always great to have, especially when it's wet, you can use the wax and the candle to make a fire. But now I'm also going to use the candle for wrapping my fishing wire. Okay, that's it. And fishing line is really hard to create like outside from natural materials and this goes right in here. Okay, so this is working out. Next, I want to throw in a small button compass. This one here. And in general, button compasses have a little bit of a bad reputation because sometimes they do not work. So you really have to make sure that you put in a button compass which is actually working. Okay, this compass is working. So this is north, 
north, north. And I'm going to throw it into my tin can. And it also comes with this small loop, so you can attach it to your to your wrist in an emergency situation, and this way you do not lose your small button compass. Next, I want to fill up the space here with some cotton balls, which are great for fire starting. And I have two other cordages that I want to throw in there. This is bowstring, and this is some other bowstring. I don't know the name exactly, but it's both used for archery and it's really strong and it's not easily ripping. So it's a really tough cordage and this is going into my survival kit as well. This is a stick of hot glue and I really want to have some hot glue in my survival kit. And now I'm cutting off a piece of it and throw it into my kit because this is great for attaching you know feathers to an arrow shaft or for attaching the tip to the shaft and this is one of the most important glues that I'm using for making arrows so I definitely want to have some hot glue in my kit okay um, here I have a couple of matches and I think it's always great if you have more means of making fire with you. So a fire steel is great, but sometimes you might fail making a fire with it. So I highly recommend that you take an additional like dozens of matches with you. And I'm going to cut off the thing here because I don't really need it. So these are the matches that I want to throw into my kit but I don't need so many, so I'm going to rip off like half of them. And this is still enough to make a couple of fires. So this is going into my Altoid survival tin. Okay, then I have a little bit of tape here, electrical tape, and I want to fit this into the tin as well, because, yeah, if you want to close the tin and make it watertight, then you really need this tape here. Alrighty, so I found one Ziploc in my tool shop and let's see if I can fit it around the corner of my survival kit. And I also have found an old knock point that I have, which is great for making arrows. And I also want to fit three feathers in there because feathers are sometimes hard to find. I don't know if this will fit. <laughs> so now we are getting really full. And last but not least, I want to have a band-aid. So if you cut yourself by accident, then you will definitely need this. Okay, now let's close the tin can. Yeah. It's still, it's very full, but it's closing down. So that's okay. Let's see if we can fit the small mirror as well. Okay. Yeah, that's it guys. So this is my small survival kit in an Altoid tin can. So these are all the items that I have put into my tin can. I have a cutting tool, a sharpening device, something to make arrows with and hot glue, signaling device and a signal mirror which is broken but it will still work. I have some fire making devices with cotton balls. I have cordage which is really good, really good and strong, a compass this thing here, ziplock, fishing kit, snare wire, band aid, and some fishing wire on the candle. And now I'm taking this tape and tape it around the lid, and this way the can will get waterproof.
and I need this ranger band and put it around the can because otherwise it will try to open itself. One hundred forty-four grams. That's pretty good, actually. I really enjoyed making the small survival kit. I really like it. And yeah, if you have a suggestion of some kind of, you know, item that is still missing in my survival kit, then please let me know. So the only thing that I can think of is maybe water purifying tablets. Please leave me a comment if you have any suggestions. And also, if you want to see more videos like this, then please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. And stay tuned till next time.